Welcome back to History Reminds Us. On today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at the Battle of Ringgold Gap, which was fought on November 27, 1863, in the small town of Ringgold, Georgia. Before we dive into the battle, let's set the stage. The Confederate Army, reeling from the defeat at the Battle of Missionary Ridge just two days prior, retreated into northwest Georgia, General Braxton Bragg, in an effort to buy time for his artillery and wagon trains, dispatched Patrick Claiborne's unit to defend the Ringgold Gap from advancing Union forces. Claiborne, leading a force of 4,157 men, was faced with a daunting task of holding the gap against a much larger Union force. Despite his reservations, Bragg refused to send additional reinforcements leaving Claiborne to make the, his stand at Ringgold. Meanwhile, Union General Grant ordered a pursuit of the retreating Confederate Army. However, days and confusions hampered the Union forces, giving Claiborne time to fortify his position at Ringgold Gap. As Claiborne's forces reached Ringgold Gap, they strategically deployed in three key locations, Taylor's Ridge, White Oak Mountain, and Withering the Gap itself. Confederate units under leaders like Major Frederick Ashford, Brigade General Mark Lowry, and Brigade General Hiram Granberry were strategically positioned to thwart the Union advance. The Union forces commanded by General Joseph Hooker included divisions from the 4th Corps, the 11th Corps, 12th Corps, and 15th Corps. These troops, under the leadership of Brigade Generals John Gary and Peter Oswas, formed a formidable challenge to Claiborne's outnumbered Confederate defenders. The morning of November 27th saw the Union forces under G General Hooker advancing towards Ringgold Gap. Claiborne's watchmen, in encountering Union scouts, raced back to inform Claiborne of the impending battle. The battle commenced as Union forces led by General Charles Woods entered the Gap but were swiftly repelled by Granberry's unit. Claiborne's troops, positioned strategically, unleashed devastating firepower, catching the Union forces off guard. The Union forces attempted various maneuvers, but Claiborne's well-placed artillery and disciplined troops held their ground. Attempts to flank the Confederate positions were thwarted by gunfire from Taylor's Ridge and cannon fire from within the Gap. As the day progressed, additional Union forces, led by John. Gary entered the fray. However, they too faced stiff resistance from the Confederate defenders positioned on Taylor's Ridge and White Oak Mountain. Despite sustaining heavy casualties, Claiborne successfully held the position for five hours. Around noon, he received word from Bragg that the Confederate Army had safely passed through the gap, prompting Claiborne to initiate a strategic retreat. Claiborne, leaving skirmishers to mask his withdrawal, pulled back from the gap around 2 p.m. and burned the bridge, effectively ending the battle. Union General Grant, arriving near the gap, decided against further pursuit and the Confederate Army escaped. The battle of Ringgold Gap, though a Confederate victory, came at a cost. Claiborne's forces suffered 20 killed and 201 wounded, while Union casualties totaled 509. The aftermath saw Hooker facing criticism, but Grant chose to retain him temporarily. Today, a small park in Ringgold Gap commemorates the battle and monuments stand as silent witnesses to the sacrifices made. The Ringgold Gap battlefield listed on the National Registration of Historic Places serves as a reminder of the struggles and bravery of those who fought on these hollow ground. Thank you for watching. I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos like this, let me know in the comment section what battle I should tackle next.